This is my next project. It belongs to a friend of mine, Charles, in Kentucky. It is a silver tone model 6740, I believe is what I read on here. How about 6074? Okay, 6074 silver tone. It was sold by Sears. It's a tape recorder. This actually has some history with Charles. It belonged to his father. And um, he would like to get it running again and playing well because he has some vintage early 60s tapes that his dad had. And maybe his dad might have his voice on some of them as well. So it has some sentimental value to Charles. So I told him that I would bring it home and go through it and see if I could get it fully functional for him. Um, the electrolytic can, they're dried out. Um, we couldn't get them to take any voltage. We also have an electrolytic down here. Same thing with that one. I checked it with my ICO 950A and it just didn't, they wouldn't take anything. It didn't shock me. Any. The, um, the smaller disc caps are fine as they usually are. Um, I'm going to go through, go through and clean it up. Uh, check the values on his uh, various resistors in here. I'll check the other caps as well, but I think they'll be fine. Um, it, it does work a little bit. We have a little corrosion here and there that I'll clean all that up. And um, deoxid his slide switches. And then we come here to the top side. I already tested his tubes. Tubes all tested good. Um, and I'll clean the motor up. Motor's free. Just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Clean some rust off. Lubricate everything really well. Um, he had an interesting thing we noted. I'll do this without cutting that wire off. There we go. Um, never seen this before. But it, one of the tubes is actually suspended. If uh, one of my watchers knows why that tube is suspended, let me know, because I don't know. I'm dealing with the radios. I've I've never seen um, a suspended tube before. Now, the they actually has tube shields that are interesting. They're kind of like an 1157 bulb almost, and the fact that the way the tube shield goes on is actually fairly, fairly cool. Um, but I'm going to clean this all up, get everything lubricated for them. This is the face. Obviously, it's out of the case. Uh, he's got the case, and he's going to clean that up while I have this. And uh, when I get it all done for him, and all cleaned up and functional, then uh, he can marry it together and hopefully play some of his dad's old reel-to-reel -reel tape. So this will be a first for me as far as uh, a reel-to-reel, -reel, but I think it's going to be fun. Um, so, we will see what we get. I'll film some stuff as we go, show you some of the progress, but um, for now, this one's for you, Charles. I just got through cutting this cap open, got it out of the recorder here. And uh, just went around it with a combination of a little hacksaw I got right here. Um, and then I finished it with a razor knife. You can see I kind of went around that. I'm going to pull, heat it up a little bit and pull the guts out. Okay, so I, I cut it all the way around like I just showed you. And now I'm getting ready to, to uh, see if I can get this. I started it. I started pulling it. There you have it, out of the can. I'll get all the capacitor, you can see the capacitor is the foil wrapped around paper and uh, with some electrolytic material between it. That's what dries out and shorts out electronically. 
So I'm going to clean this up and then we'll get to stuffing. I started on doing this and I thought maybe you guys might want to see what it looks like. So there's that terminal. That was that particular uh, capacitor which was the initial um, unwinding which was all this. That's actually the part that attaches to the um, terminal there. As you can see by that, it's isolated by the paper. So right now I am unwrapping the next one, which is going to be right there. Yeah, that just came off right there. All right, and I left some of that up here that we should probably grab. All right, and then we just keep on unwinding. Until we get to the last one, because this was a three part electrolytic, all 40s. Um, probably close enough now I can just pull it off and there it is so that is what the inside of this electrolyte capacitor looks like and I will be drilling some holes and I'll be mounting my new capacitors inside of this I'll uh, run a little video when I get those in there so you can see how that worked all right, so regarding this electrolytic cap, here is what I have done so far. So I cleaned the can out, a little bit of tar in the bottom, but that's irrelevant. And what I did here is I took the little phenolic block that was in there and I removed it. And there's still a pretty thick little rubber uh, insert in here. And what I did you can see through that I drilled three holes that correspond to the three lugs. Get my hand out of the way, you might be able to see the green out of them. But anyway, they're there. Sorry for the focus. Um, so what I'm going to do is the new cap, I'll send the positive wire out through that hole and I'll wrap it around the lug and solder it. Then that one terminal right there that I've marked with the dot in the blue that was the can ground for the electrolytics so what I'm going to do is intake the three common negatives and um, I'm going to drill another hole and bring it up to that terminal and um, attach it right there because this one is not technically grounded to the frame. It's on this isolation block. It's actually going to that terminal and there's another component that runs over that terminal. So that's what I'm doing. And then um, the other reason I did took that block out, as you can see now there's an edge around that. And I will be able to fit the can in that edge and slide it right in there and I'll have a positive engagement of about an eighth of an inch all the way around that rubber and I'll put some epoxy around that and once I shove it together it'll be like it never happened but it'll have new electrolytics and still look original.
Charles, I got this thing apart and I'm cleaning it. Obviously, I still haven't cleaned that piece yet. But, I have put all of the pieces into the ultrasonic cleaner. And I think they're going to turn out really good. You can see the water's pretty dirty from all that, pretty scummy. Ooh, that's hot. Oh yeah, look at that, man. That is like clean, clean, clean. Everything's all nice and clean here and lubricated, Charles. And you see I got, it's all working here nice. The shafts are so nicely lubricated, they're just kind of sliding out of there. One over here, same way. See, it just kind of falls out of there. But uh, everything's together properly and lubricated down here. Took that all off and lubricated that all nice. Everything's running very nicely here. So that's where we are right at the moment. So Charles, I've completed the mechanical portion of the restoration on your silver tone. Uh, recorder and I think it turned out pretty good I completely disassembled this thing and um, cleaned everything and lubricated everything um, I put some of the stuff into my ultrasonic cleaner all the levers and springs and pulleys um, anyway I, it turned out pretty good I'm, I'm pretty happy with it um, I think it's going to work pretty good for you. Right now I'm waiting on is the uh, caps. Remember that resistor was all corroded? That one? The 1000K? Well, I got some. I got some replacements. Obviously we only need one for yours. But the interesting thing was <clears throat> it wasn't just corroded. It was way out of tolerance. This is a, this is a 1000K um, you see there's a 1000 K 10 watt and this thing when I measure it was measuring like uh, 2.5 mega ohms so it had other issues so here I got the the 1 K 10 watts to replace it with I've got your can all ready to go once I get the new um, caps for it and this one, I'll, I may gut this um, and put the new cap in it, or I might just put the new cap. Um, I wanted to keep it looking stock on the top, which is why I'm restuffing this one. Um, but for the bottom, I think I'm just going to put the cap on the bottom um, and not worry about trying to make it look like this. So, um, anyway. I think it's going to turn out pretty good, man. I think it's going to work good for you. Um, checked all the mechanism, got everything lubricated and working properly. Got the tubes all cleaned up in their spots. I got the um, tube retainer shields on there and all cleaned up nice. So I think that um, I think it's going to work good for you, man. I also um, have a lot of pictures that I'll attach to the end of this video, kind of the before and after of everything. So. Anyway, this one's for you, man.
So you're looking at my cat Moose, who always thinks he has to crash the party. Um, this video is showing that electrolytic capacitor that I was going to restuff. Um, so here we go. Remember I had taken everything off and cleaned it. And I have the, the three new caps in there. This actually was originally a um, three cap capacitor, 40 microfarads each. Now they don't offer 40 microfarad at this point in time. So you can go a little bigger, you just can't go smaller. So I got 347s, they should work perfect. Um, tied all the negatives together. Brought them down the side with the lead. And remember the, the lug that I had the blue mark on, so I've wrapped that on there. That'll get soldered. The other three leads, each one I, I drilled the, the hole through there and I ran the wire up and I wrapped um, the lead around and they will get soldered. I left the holes open so I can still attach. This one right here, I haven't snipped the wire off yet. I want to make sure that I can do it the way I want to do it before I cut it off. But, this should have been pretty straightforward. Here's the can. That's the part that we talked about before. Unfortunately, it don't fit. I mean, it's just a hair. Unfortunately, it's a hair I can't make up. Because those are already as close together as they can go. And I glued them together. Can't get that to go any different. So. I have to do something different. So I went to my local hardware store. And I bought this plumbing extension tube. And it just so happens that this fits in there perfect. And that will slide in there snug. So that is going to be the plan. I saw this off. And then for the top. bought these knockout seals it just so happens the knockout seal basically fits the end of this pretty much perfectly so I'm going to cut this off on the length that I need and I'll put the knockout seal on the good nice straight edge here and I'll try and get this other edge as perfect as possible but that's going to make the new can, so I can still make this thing look as original as possible. This recorder has some meaning to Charles, so I want to get this thing as nice as I possibly can for him. So, that's the plan. We're going to cut that off. We'll put it all together, and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I got. So I got the um, new electrolytic can built and this is what it looks like I'm actually pretty pretty pleased with it I think it turned out really nice um, all came together really nicely I mean as far as building a can from scratch that's the first time I've ever done that and I think that it actually um, looks pretty darn nice I think this will look good in the in the recorder so it's not anything that's really even seen unless somebody takes it apart. Um, but I wanted to try and make it look as good as possible. I'll write the, um, actually I'm going to print out a label that has the electrolytic sizes on it. And I'll put on the, on the can on the other side. So in the future, if anybody ever wants to know what's in it, they'll be able to see that. Anyway, next up, I'm just putting it in the, in the recorder along with the, Another one that was bad, and we'll go from there. So I made a label for it, so that in the future people will know um, 
how this thing is equipped with it. It's got three 47 microfarad um, capacitors at 450 volts of working voltage. So that's how I did it. And we're going to install this thing now. Okay, here we are back. I've righted it back up. Um, put it on the block of wood. As you can see, Charles, that's that new can that I put together for you. Looks good in there. Got everything all cleaned up. Now lubricated. I showed you all that before. Um, now, let's see, I'm going to switch this on. So it's on. I'm going to dim these lights down. Uh, well, you can see that we got light on our tubes lit there. Back there, where everything is lit, everything is doing good. Okay. All right. So now, if I can do this, you know what? I'm going to put this on a tripod. Hold on a second. This is the final installment on your um, 6074 reel to reel, Charles. So here's where we're at. It's all done. Everything's back in place. Everything's clean, back in place. I deoxi deoxided your slide switch there. There's the new capacitor up there. It replaced that 25. Um, microfarad I had to change a few resistors that were way out of tolerance there's the bottom of the new um, electrolytic I put together with the 347s all the blue resistors are the new ones I changed out um, cleaned it all up check the voltages um, check the ohms there's the new 10 watt uh, 1k resistor epoxied it to the, the body so it wasn't just free floating and uh, let me flip this thing up now so you can see it now, hold on a second okay we're on the tripod now Let's see if I can keep from kicking the tripod Let's see what I'm doing here so we're on already so now I'm going to turn the motor on there we go. Well, she's running, as you can see. Now I've engaged. You can't see it spinning, but this particular one is spinning. I cock it up, maybe you might be able to see it. Okay. this in there we go and it gives us high speed and we got this one up here that can disengages Anyway, it's working as much as I can test it, big guy. Once you stick it in the housing, you'll know for sure. But I'm calling it done. Thanks for watching.